Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm actually going to be doing a little sew along with you and it's for the True Bias Ogden Cami Pattern. Right, so I recently took part in the Ogden Ida swap over on Instagram and I made just the Ogden cami. You could make the Ogden cami and the Ida clutch or you could make just the clutch or just the cami. The organisers then would pair you up with someone. You've got till the 2nd or 3rd of August, I wasn't sure exactly which one it was, to get the maid sent off and then reveal all on Instagram. So this weekend was the reveal and I've seen so many fantastic Ogden camis on there and I finally get to share what I made. It was actually the first time I made an Ogden cami so now I've made two. <laughs> I made one for my partner which she thankfully has received and loves so that's really good because obviously it's first time making it so nerve-wracking and now I've just finished making the same fabric for myself and I thought I would show you the process I went through. Now because I made one for my swap partner first and then myself, you will notice in the video that the facings aren't always the same because I videoed some of the make when I was making it for my swap partner and then I did some of the videos when I was making mine. I'm not an expert and this is by no means a tutorial, it's just showing you what I did and I basically followed the pattern. And at the end, I'll show you a little video of how it all turned out. So I hope you enjoy and this is how I made it and I'll see you at the end of the video. Okay, so now it's all cut out. The first thing they ask you to do is stay stitch around the neckline on the front and back pieces and also to stay stitch around those armholes. And this will help to stop any stretching out. So I'll go and do that now and then I'll come back to you. So that's it, stay stitched. And I just wanted to show that one thing I did now was I put a little bit of tape on the back pieces so that we can tell which is the front and which is the back while sewing. We're going to make the straps, so take both the strap pieces and fold them right sides together. Give a press with the iron and then we're going to stitch all the way along and trim down before turning. Okay, so we've done the straps and basically just folded them in half and stitched. And then we're trimming away with my pinking shears here to make the seam allowance smaller. And then it asks you to turn uh, the straps the right way and press. Now I had to turn them with my safety pin as I didn't have a loop turner but if you do have one obviously that'd be easier I'm just going to show you that I quickly did it here with the safety pin just to get those tubes turned the right way out and then get ready to press them so I speed it up here uh, because obviously it took a little time turning those They're a bit fiddly and obviously I think in future projects I will use a loop turner if I can get hold of one because the safety pin was a bit harder on my fingers but we got there in the end and turned them out ready and press them ready for attaching. Now that we've got those straps ready and I took them and I pressed them it asks in the pattern for you to get the front bodice piece and to line up the straps against the dot that you marked on the pattern. I couldn't really show you that on this because the fabric was uh, quite busy, but I lined it up and then made sure that the raw edges of the strap matched up with the top raw edge of the pattern piece. Pinned in place and then do the same obviously with the other side, making sure that they are lying down towards the pattern like this. And then we'll take it to the machine and baste across the top of both those straps. So now the straps are basted so they won't move when we do this next step. It asks you to take both the main pattern pieces and put them right sides together. 
making sure that they match up and also they've put notches or you should have put notches down the sides of the patterns so that it makes it easy at this stage to match up those notches and I'll show you here where my notches are on the side so I'll match those notches up there and then can pin the pieces together and sew down both sides to attach. Actually French seemed in the end so obviously I put the wrong sides together first and stitched and then the right side together and stitched giving you a neat seam on the outside and also on the inside and that looked like this. Okay now we need to take the lining pieces and turn them over a quarter of an inch and another quarter of an inch and then get a nice um, hot iron and press those in place. Then I use my wonder clips to hold it in place. I'm going to stitch a nice edge stitch all the way round to neaten the bottom of that lining piece. Now we need to assemble the lining and the main pieces so that they're attached. So matching the back pieces there, which of course I marked earlier with the tape to make it easier. I'm going to make sure that the raw edges match up at the top where the straps are. And I've put a little wonder clip at both of those to hold it in place. And then one thing they, they recommended that you do is to make sure that those straps you basted earlier are not going to get in the way of this stitching. So I took a safety pin and pinned both the straps onto the lining pieces so they're away from where we're about to stitch. And I did that for both my straps so that they are not going to get in the way and caught up. And then we're going to go and stitch the lining and the main pieces together around the necklines and around the armholes. And then obviously this will attach the two pieces together. We're not going to be stitching at the back at the top where the straps will go because we're going to leave that open as we've only inserted the straps and attached them at the front at the moment. So we need to leave that open at the back so we can attach them at the back once we've finished this section here. So don't sew across here. Now that they're attached, it's starting to really come together and look like the nearly finished cami that it's gonna be. You need to snip in those center V, so you get a good sharp V there, making sure you snip close to as possible but without snipping into those stitches you just did. And also they recommend some notches around that stitching so that it will turn easier. Again, as close as you can to that stitching will help. Okay, so now that we've um, stitched around and attached the facing, we need to get that second part of the strap attached to the back. So what we do is we take the strap here, find where it's gonna go at the back, and I'm just checking here that it actually is the back. So I've got my little um, sticker on the back so that I knew. So we're gonna be finding the back. And I think I find it about now, there you go, look. So get the strap and we're gonna gently go underneath the lining without twisting the strap, round to the back of the cami and then feeding it up through where we left the gap earlier in the stitching so that the raw edges then meet at the top of the area there. So you can see I've got the strap through and I'm just gonna place a little wonder clip there to hold that in place because I wanna then go back and just double check that it hasn't twisted and that it's lying the same direction all the way around so that when we put it in place and turn it through, it's not gonna have any twists. Then you can sew across and attach the strap. I did forget to record this section, so I'm just showing you here if it can, if it does show up, that I understitched, as they suggest, the seam that we just did to the lining. You can't really see, but it will hold it down away when you are looking at it from the outside. And you won't see those stitches because they're underneath and they're not on the front there, look. Okay, almost finished. So to hem for me, I turned up the bottom by the quarter of inch and again exactly like we did on the lining and then edge stitch around for a nice neat finish at the bottom there. Then the very last step they want you to do, 
just to help hold that lining piece down so it doesn't rise up when wearing or washing is just put a couple of stitches where I'm showing down the side holding that lining down onto the main fabric and then you are done. So that was my Ogden Cami experience. I thought I'd give you just a little bit of um, my thoughts on the pattern. So uh, it came like this and then you've got the little instruction booklet. I'm very much a um, step by step, lead me by the hand kind of sewer because I've not been doing it for very long. And I actually got stuck almost at, well, yeah, at the very first step. So cutting the fabric out, I'm used to seeing the fabric layout like they have, perfect, but also a key telling you whether it's right side together, wrong side together. And I did read that page before you start on definitions a few times and it didn't say whether this grey was the right side or the wrong side. And I didn't know if it made any difference, but I'm very much a, if I'm not sure what I'm doing, I panic. So I had a look at the front and I thought, because it shows sort of the outside fabric white and then you can just see that the inside is showing grey, that that would then be the wrong side of the fabric. However, <laughs> I thought I'd just have another look and further in on the next page, when it's telling you how to do the straps, at the very end, it's showing you the right side out and it's the grey. So, <laughs> I've decided from this, whether it makes any difference or not, I don't know, but it always throws me when I don't know exactly what I'm doing. The right side of the fabric is showing here. So I folded it wrong side together before I cut out. And then pretty much um, directions were quite straightforward. Again, like I say, I do like to be told you know in no unmistakable terms what we're doing and I was a little unsure when it came to the straps on step three when it tells you to pin them it does say to make sure that each strap is on the front cami which I did and the raw edge of the strap should be flush with the raw at the top fine but it didn't say and you couldn't really tell because obviously it's a tube where the seam on that strap should be so I put my seam sticking up so it was showing up so that the right side that had no seam was lying flat against the right side of the cami. I worked out that then when you finished the seam would be hidden underneath um, but it didn't tell you to do that so I'm just thinking you know if you've never done it before you might just place the straps on and then when you turn it out you might have that seam running along the front but that's just me because I'm a beginner maybe that's obvious to everyone else that you wouldn't do that. Other than that I loved this it's such an easy sew and I'm planning on making a couple more very soon. The first one I wanted to do next, I really want to try a hack I saw from Rachel on her channel Stitched Up, and I will link the detail to that video in the description. And she did a flounce um, along the front of her cami, which I absolutely loved. So I think I might try that. And then um, the other thing I was thinking I might try is extending the facings to a few inches below the main fabric. So you'd have like a double layered tiered top going on. I thought that might be quite nice. Since the fabric I'm using is this gorgeous viscose and it's by Lady McElroy and it's in uh, three colorways. It does this white, it does a green and it also does a blue. Now, if you follow Susie over at Threadquarters, you may recognise this fabric. She used this on a lovely Vogue dress. I think it's 9253. Again, I'll put all the details in the description for you. She used it in the blue colourway, so do go on and have a look at that. But I actually got this for free, which again is in a previous video. A lovely lady gifted me this, and I think I'll purchase the blue or the green to make some more. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I will now pop in a little video of me so that you can see how the cami turned out and um, I'm going to wear it on the lovely hot summer days I'm hoping are coming back. If you're a subscriber I thank you so much I'm so excited to see that I'm actually nearly at 200 and I didn't expect to get anyone other than family and friends watching my channel so thank you I really appreciate your support. If you've enjoyed this one and you're not a subscriber please do subscribe making sure you hit that bell and then you'll get notified every time I upload you won't miss any of my further videos and I will see you all in the next video.